talk about the dynamic VXML applications and the self-service IVR. The most important thing which is being utilized by these IVR is an integration with any third-party system. That, part, that third-party system can expose, can expose any interfaces. For example, it could be a database integration which is available out of, uh, out of the box in the Cisco. Now also, we can develop our own custom plugin to integrate with the database because there are certain things which is not supported by out of the box element of Cisco. Other than that, there are some other interfaces. For example, there are some uh, integration with the REST services, there is integration with the SOAP services, or it could be an integration with any socket programming, okay? So uh, we can do all this thing with the help of Java by integrating with the VXML application. In the current application, I'm going to show you a very basic example of integration with the Java database uh, by utilizing inside the VXML Studio. So here you can see these are the some prereqs nodes which we need to utilize when we are going to start the development of IVR. After that, I have just played a welcome message to the customer for the greeting. This this node is basically is the main crux of this application, which is responsible to integrate with the Java with Java uh, with the help of Java to the database. And for that, I have created a dynamic class which is responsible. Uh, to get the flight number from the database okay once we have the flight number we are planning it with the help of the smart plugin and this is play this should be played uh, uh, totally dynamic I mean this, this does not depend on the customer so every customer has will, will have its own unique flight number so it will be played dynamically for every uh, calling customer let's go to the Java so how we have created the class as we have already created a Java project, so creating a class is just a, a few clicks. So for example, I can click on this my package and then I can go to the class and here I can select the name of the class. For example, get flight number. Uh, we will also be covering the Java naming convention which is being used uh, for the Java development so that we will follow all the standard which is by, supposed to follow by the Oracle. Uh, so for example, I can use this uh, as we already have a class. So that's why it's just giving me an error So we don't need to make another class. We can utilize the same class which I have created Okay, so I'll be going in the get flight number class and the, the most important thing which you can see is that this is not an ordinary class Just like we have a Java. We have extended and implemented extended from the action element based class and this class is basically provided by the Cisco uh, we will we will be explaining more in detail like how and why we require to do this thing and what is the purpose of this having said that I have created a basic data source uh, by following the JNDI configuration what is the JNDI also we will be covering this in our uh, actual training sessions uh, so I'm just considering that we have now a data source which, which can be utilized to make a connection with the database once we have that, uh, we have one uh, override method which is necessary whenever you are creating a Java action component. We call it as a JAG. Uh, so in the do action class, we have to write our actual code. So for example, here what I have done, we have created a connection with the database with the help of data source. After that, we have created a simple query to select the flight number from the database based on the customer calling number. To anyone, to any customer who is calling, uh, we will be getting the flight number from the database. So once we have that flight number, we will be storing in our session element to utilize it later on in our say, smart plugin. So this class will done its job and then save the number to the session so that we can utilize it later on to play dynamically to the customer. So this node, we have set the number. In the next node, we're going to play this number with the help of say smart plugin. So this, the whole use case would be when the customer will call, it will hear a welcome message and then his flight number and then his call will end. Uh, Java is basically is the backbone of any Cisco element. Uh, for example, in case of Cisco CVP, if you wanted to develop a dynamic application, you need to integrate Java with your VML application. The beauty is that in the same uh, Cisco Unified Call Studio, you can develop the Java application. So for example, you can go to the IVR, you can select a Java project instead of a builder project. So this will give you an opportunity 
and uh, functionality to develop the Java app project. So for example, I can't, I call it like a training test. So this is the name of my project and then you can select the your JRE. So uh, uh, by, by selecting these uh, properties, you can create actually a Java project. Here you can see. So I have now a Java project available on my uh, package explorer which I can use to develop the application. For troubleshooting, the most important thing is uh, extensive logging of that particular component. In case of Cisco, Cisco provides an extensive logging uh, for the VxML application. For example, uh, once, we will de once we will deploy this uh, VxML application on a CVP, CVP server, we will have this folder and inside of this folder we will have the logs which contain all the logs for this particular application. So any hit which, which actually perform on this application will be available inside the logs. Inside the logs there are different categories. One is called activity log. These logs contain the detail of each and every session happen on that particular VXML application. This also contains extensive logging. For example, here you can see this is the log of this particular application. Like when the caller comes, what, what actually performs on the IVR and how the IVR reacts. Similar to that, there are uh, some other logs. For example, the error logs. This will show if any particular error happened into that VXML application. So with the help of these, uh, we can actually troubleshoot our VXML application more thoroughly. There are there are so many other things we need to find out uh, in the. In the